Pandemics and epidemics were everyday parts of life in the centuries before our own. Each ship sailing into port and each traveler arriving in town came with the risk of disease and death. Which brings us to the summer of 1841 in Florida's city of St. Joseph. About the middle of June, a fever of a violent type appeared among some mechanics working on the wharf, which resulted fatally in two cases. A few days after, it broke out and spread among those living in the oyster houses and small grocery shops on the south side of Commerce Street near the wharf, assuming a most malignant character and terminating in the usual symptoms of yellow fever. It then spread over the town and up to the 30th of July there have been 37 deaths. New Orleans Times-Picayune, describing the fever in St. Joseph, Florida, August 10, 1841. Until the yellow fever, St. Joseph was a city of dreams. It was on the shores of sparkling St. Joseph Bay, where Port St. Joe stands today. The city emerged from the wilderness in one year to become one of Florida's largest towns. The first lots were sold in December 1835, and one year later, Florida's first real railroad chugged down an eight-mile run from Lake Wimico to St. Joseph Bay in a bold effort to divert paddlewheel riverboat traffic from the nearby port city of Apalachicola. Two years after it was founded, St. Joseph hosted the convention that drafted Florida's first constitution. The grand city on the bay, however, did not survive to witness the establishment of the state that constitution helped create. Its ravages in our small community, where we knew all personally who have fallen victims to it, have been terrible and appalling. Never was a community so little prepared for it, and though the kindest offices of humanity have been mutually and faithfully exercised by the living towards the sick, Yet there has been more anguish and distress than we have ever witnessed before. St. Joseph Times Extra, July 1841. The yellow fever was terrible and showed no respect for wealth or status. The town's only doctor fled for his life as bodies were piled into a mass grave. The wife of former Governor William P. Duvall, Mariana founder Robert Beveridge, and Federal Judge Richard Allen were among the dead. I was there, in the midst of the fever. Judge Allen is dead, and 47 others of the yellow fever. Pensacola Gazette describing the fever in St. Joseph, Florida, August 14, 1841. When the fever finally ended in late summer, the city that once boasted thousands of residents had fewer than 500. A massive hurricane struck on September 14. Most of the survivors fled. By 1843, only 19 remained to cast their ballots in the state elections. A ship stopped by the next year. One of the officers left a haunting description of the city that rose and fell in just six years. Fine dwellings, finished in the best styles, have been abandoned by their owners and left to rot piecemeal in the weather. Windows and doors are gaping open swinging to and fro with every gust. Grass grows rankly in the streets, and wolves and bears now prowl where only a few years ago was all bustle and excitement of business. Edward Anderson, Diary, May 1st, 1844. The legend of the life and death of St. Joseph was retold in Rubilee Hall's 20th century novel, The Great Tide. Bricks from the city helped pave Palafox Street in Pensacola, and some of the homes were moved to nearby Apalachicola. You can learn more about Old St. Joseph at Constitution Convention Museum State Park in Port St. Joe, Florida. Check for open hours before visiting. Also, learn more online at twoegtv.com. Remembering the lost city of the Florida Gulf Coast, I'm Dale Cox for Two Egg TV.